Hello and thank you so much for joining me today for this thought from the Bible as we continue to dig into some of the, the minor characters that we find within this book's pages at the start of this year. Today's minor character is found in the book of Luke. To set the scene a little bit, the parents of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, have made their way to the temple in Jerusalem in order to, to bring a sacrifice as required in the books of Exodus and Leviticus for firstborn children. They, they can't afford to bring a lamb, so they bring a, a pair of birds as the instructions detail. And while they're there, during this, this process, they meet a man called Simeon, who recognizes this baby as the Messiah and prophesies about him, praising God for the salvation to come. I can only imagine how Mary and Joseph must have been feeling at this time, absolutely blown away by this reception of their son, the Bible tells us that they marveled at what they were hearing. And yes, of course, they'd had those angelic visitations about the birth of Jesus, but this must have felt a little bit more tangible somehow. Real people saying, this, this right here is the Messiah. And it's at that point that another person enters the scene, a woman this time named Anna. And this is all that we know about her, found in the book of Luke chapter 2, which says there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Now, as with all of these minor characters in the Bible, it can be so easy to overlook this woman, to overlook Anna and and what she did in this story. But there is so much that we can learn from her life. Now, the chances are Anna was married pretty young. Uh, she may have been 13 or 14 years old when she was married. That was fairly common at the time. And I think it's safe to say that her life didn't pan out in quite the way that she was expecting. Instead of a, a long life with her husband, she found herself a widow just seven years later. And then she lived as a widow, either until she was 84 or for 84 more years. That passage can kind of be translated in either way. If the latter was true, that would have made her around 105 years old at the time that Jesus first entered the temple as a baby. You are never too old for God to use you. But I assume that she would have been young enough probably to remarry, but she didn't. So maybe that implies affection for her lost husband. We don't really know. We don't know anything about the man that she married. But, but suddenly, this life that she had envisioned, perhaps the plans for the future that she had made with her husband, possibly the hope of children or, or more children, we don't know if she had any or not, all of that was gone. And she found herself alone. I can't imagine how that must have felt for her, especially as living as a widow in that time would most likely have meant relying on charity for food and clothing and everything else that she might have needed. It would have been a harder life. When things don't go as we expect in life, when things don't pan out as we'd hoped that they would, especially when it's in a, a painful way, which we don't understand. It's all too easy for us to turn to self-pity. Why has this happened to me? Why would God have allowed this to happen in my life? 
And it's okay to ask those questions. Asking them is a good thing, it's a healthy thing. We see that over and over again in the Bible in books like the Psalms, where people ask exactly this. Asking these, these questions can be a part of the grieving process and it's important. But we can get stuck in that place, feeling more and more miserable, wishing over and over again that things had turned out differently and not even paying attention to what is now happening in our lives because we wish that it had worked out in a different way. Anna though, she makes a decision at this moment of her life to do something different. She chooses to take her eyes off of her circumstances, as horrendous as they may have been, and to turn them on to God. In the middle of a wasteland, with her life turned upside down, she begins to worship. In the midst of a very real pain, the loss of her husband, the loss of the future that she'd imagined, she begins to pray. And the Bible tells us that she never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying, rather than devoting her life to self-pity, to wondering what if, to turning away from God even. She instead devotes her life to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, rather than getting caught up in, in anger and frustration and bitterness. She recognizes that God has a plan, even through the toughest of times, even when we can't see it. Anna is only one of only a few prophetesses named in the Bible. She's the only one named in the New Testament, though, though we know that there were others as we read through the book of Acts and other points in the New Testament. But the fact that Anna was a prophet was, was known to Luke as he authored this book. Perhaps as he was researching the early days of Jesus, he, he went to the temple and spoke to people and, and found out about this woman, Anna, who was a prophet. The people at the time recognized that gifting in her, that calling in her. It's possible that she was even given quarters at the temple or close by because of that highly respected status that she held. I wonder if that would have been the case had her life not changed so dramatically in that moment when her husband passed away. Possibly she may have ended up in that role of a prophet anyway, but, but I kind of doubt it. She would have had other responsibilities then, other things to, to have focused on besides worship and prayer and fasting. Often in the moment of pain, in that moment of doubt and fear, we struggle to imagine that God could possibly bring something good out of the suffering we're experiencing. We find it impossible to imagine that there could be another path when that path that we were expecting to follow has crumbled about our feet. And yet, God can do anything. We don't see the entire plan. We don't see the entire picture. And it can genuinely be hard to understand why he allows us sometimes to go through things that can hurt so very badly, that can seem to change the course of our lives instantly. But he does have a plan and there is so often a purpose to our pain, even if we can't see it at the time. See, not only was Anna a known prophet, someone who, who brought comfort and encouragement to the Jewish people at that time, but this ancient woman who had devoted her life to worship and to prayer had the immense honor of getting to see Christ Jesus on earth, getting to recognize 
that this little baby held in his mother's arms was to be the salvation of her people. And more than that, she started to tell people about it too. A woman who could so easily have turned to hopelessness in her life brought hope to God's people by speaking about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. And I'm sure that her words and her thanksgiving to God for this baby boy were an encouragement to Mary and to Joseph at that time as well. If you find yourself in a a wasteland situation right now, if you find yourself in a place of pain, then I want to encourage you today, don't give up. Don't give in to hopelessness and self-pity. It could be bereavement. It could be any kind of loss, a person, a job, a relationship, an opportunity. It could be sickness a real physical pain. It could be a dream or a plan that you've hoped for for years that seems to be going nowhere. Whatever it is, you may find yourself wondering why, why this is happening to you, why God hasn't intervened in that situation. And if that is you today, then I want to encourage you to trust in the goodness of our great God. And just like Anna, to begin to worship and to pray in that place. We don't know what God will bring out of that situation, but his hand is on your life and you are not alone in it. No matter how you may feel right now, I can guarantee you that there would have been moments when Anna felt so alone especially close after the death of her husband. And yet she began in that place to recognize the faithful God who has promised never to leave us and never to forsake us. What you're going through right now, this story of your life that you're writing, it may be something that can bring encouragement and hope to others who may go through a similar situation of pain and difficulty. This situation that you're going through right now and learning through and developing in may be something that you can use to point people to our great God. Sometimes it's through the hardship and through those difficult times that we do learn and grow and develop that we become closer to our great God through it. And through that becoming closer to God, have more to give out to other people in this world. No matter what's happening in your life right now, no matter whether it's going really well or you're really struggling, remember God has a plan. God is with you. He has not forsaken you you are not alone. Thank you so much for joining me today for that thought from the Bible. I'll be back on Wednesday next week with another video. But if you've had any thoughts on this particular story, anything else about Anna that I haven't spoken about or anything that's really encouraged you, please do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And um, it's, it's always great to hear what God is telling you from the Bible as well. So I would love to hear from you, but I will see you next week for another thought from the Bible. See you then.